please, before we thank you for having me. You're welcome. Before we start, I've not done the prayer yet, so we will pray and then start. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for tonight, for this beautiful time in your presence. Father, we are so grateful and so happy to be online once again, even as we sit on your table to dine. Lord, help us to digest the food. Let the food bring nourishment onto our spiritual and our physical life. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Viewers, you are welcome. Amen. You are welcome once again. We have a wonderful man of God, humble, endowed with grace and wisdom in the area of marriage. I've listened to a lot of his series and it's been a blessing to me. So tonight, God has made him available unto us. Out of his busy schedule, from 8 till 8, he's busy. He's made time to share what God has given unto him to us tonight. So if you are here, please, tag someone, share. You know how we do it. And drop your questions, sir. We are going to welcome Apostle Thomas Kusi Apia. He's very, very endowed in the area of marriage. So put right, get your pens and your pads ready and make notes. If it's your iPads and your phones, get it ready and make notes. Apostle, you are welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Please. My guest, we are waiting. We are so hungry for what you have prepared for us. Tonight, we are going to talk about how to maintain a healthy, successful marriage. Marriage itself is something else. I don't even want to go into it, but I know that you're going to help us digest everything. Those in marriage, those about to enter marriage is knowledge. So, Apostle, please introduce yourself to us. We, some of us, we don't don't know who you are we don't know where you are from we don't know what you do so if you can humbly tell us all right thank you for having me my name is apostle thomas Kusi Apia, the head pastor of eternal life international ministry okay. you know we have a branch in london but the name is eternal life christian okay. center eternal life christian center headed by my own father pastor uh, reverend Kusi Apia, and wow. the in Ghana, it's Eternal Life International okay. Ministries. Yeah, so I'm also a security intelligence analyst. Mm -hmm. Security intelligence okay. analyst. Wow, that's amazing. It is beautiful to yes, have seven people that with, are working in the Yes, world. I'm married with four daughters. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> that's amazing. Thank you, Apostle, for introducing yourself. Viewers, you you've heard him. A humble servant of God, working in the vineyard of God. Apart from that, he, he's, he's a security analyst, intelligence analyst or something you said? Yes, security intelligence analyst. Security intelligence analyst. Did you hear that? Yes. That's powerful. This tells us how intelligent he is. So every aspect of marriage tonight, we are more than ready. Apostle, we are intrigued. I've heard a lot of your marriage series. I think I should have actually started with what marriage actually entails, but we will jump from there. And I believe that God will give us another opportunity to share or to, to dine with you once again. But tonight, we want to, you know, this thing called marriage, we, we, we go into it, we, we go through the, the, the counseling and everything and this love thing, and then you get into marriage and then along the line, you, you lose, some of us lose control. Some don't even understand stand their spouses anymore. Some think they are married to strangers. We, we all trust God and we know that God can do miracles. But then in as much as God is able to do something, we believe that as, 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 as human as we are, we also have to put our efforts and we also have to make an input into the marriage. So tonight, our main aim on this platform is before I, I think I jumped a bit, is that um, God gave us a word in Titus 2, how the older women should teach the younger women how to marry, and the older men should also mentor the younger men. And so we've realized that around this time, in this era, there is a lot of confusion. There is a lot going on. I, I call it the social media era. There is so much. They, we look at movies and we think that is marriage. And sometimes if it's not working, they think it's okay to just part ways. But we want to go biblically. We want to go by God's word. We want to be a generation that God has prepared that we will not um, cause the Holy Spirit to be grieved. We want to, be, we want to learn from our leaders. We want to learn from our fathers. And so we bring fathers online. We bring wisdom-packed men 
that are grown in the Lord to endow us with wisdom so that we can marry well, we can do what pleases God. So that is why we are here tonight. And so, um, as I said earlier, how do we maintain a healthy home? How do we maintain a healthy marriage? Because sometimes we do all we can, and yet still, it doesn't work. So how do we go yeah, about it? Let, all right, let's say a very good evening to all church and viewers and those who are watching us yeah. live on Facebook. Um, and let's also thank you for um, allowing me to be part of your discussion tonight. Amen. It's a privilege to always share the word of Amen. God. So I'm so much delighted to join you. Yeah, apparently one thing I will I mean always say is that like Mars Moreau said, Mars Moreau of Blessed Memory made a profound statement that when purpose is not known, abuse is inevitable. Oh yes. So we are looking at how to and uh, maintain a healthy relationship or how to enjoy marriage. But the good the, the truth is if you don't understand the purpose of marriage, mm -hmm. then you, you, you end up abusing it. Yeah. So the reason many people are suffering, the reason many people are not happy, and the reason many people are enduring in their marriage is that many have lost the purpose of mm -hmm. marriage. Okay. So we are now trying to make it our own, but it's good, and I'm happy, like as you said, to I mean, I mean, discuss and also enlighten people on some yeah. of these issues. I will start off by saying that you can only enjoy your marriage. You can only maintain a good relationship when you understand its purpose. Mm -hmm. That's the first. There are about four elements I will speak about. Okay. But the first is to yeah, say that you need to understand what marriage about. is all about. Okay. I will just rush to a scripture um, in Romans chapter 1, verse number 20. It's a very profound, there's a very profound statement over there. The Bible speaking said, Romans chapter 1, verse number 20, yes. for since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen. So the whole concept of creation, as we look at it, it's not God creating anything you know. It's a system of transportation. Yes. God thought about bringing things which were already in the spiritual realm into the physical realm. So the Bible speaking said, for since the creation of the world, is invisible, including God himself. His own invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. So the whole concept of creation was to reveal something about God. Mm -hmm. And let me say this, if you check all the things God created, what he created to represent himself on this earth is marriage. Mm -hmm. I'm going to repeat that That's right. again. For God created to represent himself on this earth it's is marriage. Right. And this is one of the mysteries that many people, including pastors, are not aware. Mm -hmm. So marriage is not just about me as a man having the money or whatever, getting married to a woman. No, marriage is God. Mm -hmm. So I want my viewers or our viewers to take note of this. Marriage is God. Mm -hmm. What defines God on this earth is marriage. Mm -hmm. So if you have this understanding, or perhaps let me only show our viewers a, a simple scripture in the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 1, a very popular, a popular scripture that we are all aware of. Chapter 1, now verse 26 speaks of God creating or planning to create a man. Mm -hmm. Now verse 27 is where the actual creation happened. Mm -hmm. So in Genesis chapter 1, we are going to look at marriage. And let me say this, the very day God created man, he created man with marriage. Okay. Marriage is or was not an afterthought of God. This is where many, many says. I always said our problem now is misinterpretation of scriptures. That's right. Our problem now, many ministers of God in attempting to explain some of this is ended up misinterpreting, and that's our problem now. Mm. Marriage was not an afterthought. Marriage was something that God created right the day he created man. Mm. And let's look at it from Genesis chapter 1. Verse number 27. The Bible speaking says, so God created man. And let me say this, the Bible itself, or the Bible has a key for itself. So you don't assume. Assumption is one of the most, I mean, dangerous or devilish system that when you bring it to the, I mean, the, 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 the scriptures, you, 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 you end up misquoting it. Right. So now when God says God created man, the simple question is, who is this man? Mm. Don't assume. Okay. The Bible will explain who this man is. So God created man mm -hmm. in his own mm -hmm. image. Now there, there is a semicolon, meaning he is going to explain further. 
who this man is. In the image of God, he created him. That's what the first element he used to explain the man is him. There's another semicolon there to explain further who this him or who this man is. And he now put it male and female, he created mm. them. So the very day God created this man, he put two elements. And these elements are responsible for marriage. Mm. Your maleship mm. and your femaleship. Mm. Your maleship and femaleship de describe the, 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 the spiritual and psychological element of mm. a person. So God created this man, he put the maleship and the femaleship together. Mm. And that is marriage. So the man was standing there as one being or one unit, but in the sight of God, God was looking at two people in his presence. Now, if you so if you still disagree or if you are saying doubt, share the verse 28 to let you know that you are looking at one man standing there, but God was looking at two people because he put two elements together. So the verse 28 now says that then God blessed them. Meanwhile, it was only one person standing before him. Then God blessed mm. them, and God said to them. Mm. So the very first day God created the man, he had the male ship, and, he, and these are the components of marriage. So I did a sermon, or a teaching that marriage is never between a man and a woman. Mm. Marriage is never between a man. Marriage is between a male and a female. And that will explain the whole discussion tonight that how can you maintain a healthy relationship until you put these two elements together you don't have marriage so many of us are together with our partners but it's just a partnership mm. marriage is a covenant and that covenant can only happen when you have male and female come together you can be a man but that does not qualify you to be a male mm. and the father you are a woman that's not guarantee that you are a female. So I will explain these two elements. And you understand why the very first day God created man, he put these two elements together. Now you see, we didn't understand this until Jesus came on the scene. And people were complaining about how and why marriages are collapsing. This one will marry today. In fact, Moses was so devastated that and that, that's when he was forced to even grant them all this. It's okay, now you can go ahead to divorce your wife. So now they went to Jesus and they went to Matthew chapter 19. Matthew chapter 19, from verse number 3, it will tell you that, let me read from there. The Pharisees also came to him, testing him, and saying to him, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for just any reason? They are asking a question of divorce. And the simple, they are looking for a simple answer, yes or no. But Jesus was just laughing. He said, Why? Have you ever heard of any man saying that? Oh, my wife is so good, so I want to divorce her. Oh, my <laughs> husband is so good. So, so the day you so think so. of divorce, it's an evidence mm. that there's a problem with That's your marriage. Right. Divorce only comes in when there's a problem with your marriage. That's right. And there has been problems with our marriage because the foundation God laid for marriage, mm. and every Christian don't know it, that marriage is not just between a man and a woman. Marriage is between a male okay. and a female. So what they were not cutting this about the world, it was like, look, you guys have missed a point. When you meet somebody who is saying, I'm having a headache, it's an evidence that there's a problem with the system. Yeah. So if you just do the person panadol or paracetamol, you're just treating a symptom, mm -hmm. but you're not solving the problem. What about if the person is suffering from malaria and that's what is causing the headache? What if the person is suffering from um, fever or constipation? So in order to help the person to, to, to solve the symptoms or the headache, you must identify the problem itself. Yeah. So that once you are now treating yeah. the problem, you end up solving the symptom, which is the headache. So they are asking of a question, that the question about the world. But now Jesus is going to answer them. So verse 4, we are reading Matthew chapter 19, verse 4. And he answered and said to them, have you not read that he who made them, now pay attention to this scripture, that he who made them at the beginning made them male and female. Mm. So the foundation of marriage is that God built marriage on the foundation of male and female. That's right. So the, the moment you don't have this foundation, you are going to struggle in your marriage. You are going to endure. It is going to be a warfare 
you are going to try to outshine and outrun and outpower and um, prove yourself in your marriage. We don't marry to prove ourselves. We marry to empower ourselves. We marry to complement ourselves. But you can only do this when you activate your mentorship and your free mission. So these are telling them the reason why today many people are having issues with their marriage is that they've destroyed the foundation. The one who made them at the beginning made them male and female. So the question again, how can we build or maintain a healthy relationship? Number one, you should understand that one, the whole concept of marriage is God. Two, marriage or your marriage must be built on the foundation of your leadership and your free mission. That is a cast. I told you to talk about four elements. But let's let's say I know people are confused. So what does it mean to we have a mailship and free mission? I know our viewers will be confused by now. And they, will, they want to know who is a male and who is a female. Let's read this for two minutes to just talk about it. Like I said, your maleship and your female should describe your spiritual and sacred element of you. So it is an understanding you must have. So if you are a man, like I said, just be a man, do not qualify you as a male. But there's a kind of understanding you must have. When you are able to build this understanding, that if you have activated your mission. Wow. So now what, is, what, what does it mean? This is what it means. You don't marry to become a husband. Mm. No. Okay. You don't marry to become mm. a husband. You don't give birth to become a father. Mm. These are elements of your mission. Which means, the day you, ha- you, you, you discover yourself to be a man, the first thing you should know that there are three roles I yes, must play yes. on this earth. Right. The first role is the role of fatherhood. Mm-hmm. You must be a father. Mm-hmm. And fatherhood here simply means you are discovering yourself. The word father means Abba. And Abba means source. So you are discovering yourself as a source. Where anything around you. So your fatherhood is describe your responsibility toward the society. Not your children alone. Mm-hmm. Like I said, you don't give them to become a father. It is, mm-hmm. it is a state of leadership where you equip yourself, you take that responsibility that I'm a source. So it is my duty to empower things around mm-hmm. me. It is my duty to protect things around me. It is my duty to provide. It is an understanding you must have. So the day you now discover and activate that fatherhood, you destroy all the elements of blame game, all the elements of irresponsibility you destroy. So today you have women who are complaining about their wife because a husband, because most husbands are irresponsible. When you meet any woman who says, My husband is not taking care of the children, my husband, if you, that man was never a male, how? Mm. That man never discovered himself as a father. So it's an understanding you must have. So whilst you're growing up, you begin to equip yourself with this understanding. So even if that's your workplace, you, you show leadership. You empower people. You build people up. Mm. And that is a father. So when you marry and you give them, your wife, uh, uh, see, now comes under that authority where she's able to benefit from you mm. because a father protects, a father that's provides, right. a father empowers. Mm. So any man who don't have these qualities is an evidence he's not a father. That's why you have men who are even afraid to empower their wives because he's afraid that this woman is it gets to a certain level. That's she should not true. respect you. You're not a father. <laughs> a father always wants the children to go ahead, but be, be at places that you never got the opportunity to get to. A father had that understanding, had that understanding to empower people. Right. So there are many men who are walking around, who are in marriage today, and yet they are not males. Yes. Why? They've mm. not activated their, their fatherhood. Mm. The second element in maleship, I'm talking about there are three yes. elements or three rules right. that the moment you activate it, you have activated your relationship as a man. Mm. The second element is the element of husband. Mm. You don't marry to become right. a husband. No, you must be a husband before you marry. Mm. So the whole system of husband or be, the process of being a husband is that you have now have an understanding. You have the understanding mm. that you have an exclusive duty to only your wife. Mm. Any man who, who is not a male knows that or has discovered that I have an exclusive duty to only my wife. There is something that only my wife has authority to have or mm. access. The threat is your body. That's mm. why first process of 7, 
converse, my mother will tell you, if you're a husband, if you have this understanding of a husband, what it means is that you understand that only your wife has authority over your body. Mm-hmm. The Bible scripture said, the husband does not have authority over his own body, but the wife does. Mm-hmm. And if you understand this, it means once you're growing now, you know that no matter the kind of women who comes around me, no matter how I cherish them, none of them have authority or to, to look at my nakedness. None of them have authority to see my nakedness except my wife. So there are many people before they marry, they've already destroyed that foundation of husband. Mm. So you marry and you can't be a husband. You will marry and still cheat on your wife. So today many women are devastated okay. because they've married dogs. We men who cannot zip or uh, mommy close their zip. <laughs> anything is that man was never an advance mm. and he can be an advance in marriage. Mm. Marriage don't change people. Mm. And this is my advice to the women. Never assume that marriage will change. Marriage is just like money. Marriage is just like money. Mm. It's rather amplified behavior. Yes. Marriage, okay. so don't say, I, 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 I just hope when we marry, you will change. Never mm. make that statement. It's mm. not true. Marriage is like an amplifier. It gives power, volume to a behavior. Mm. So, whatever you see the man doing, except God comes in, he won't change. Marriage cannot change anybody. That's right. So, if this man is not a husband, don't think he can be a husband in marriage. Mm. So, when I meet the ladies who are now complaining about their husband cheating, I said, Well, when you, you met, he was here, husband. You, you, you were even part of those he was cheating with. Because you were not even a wife. <laughs> and yet, you were sleeping with him. Mm. So, it's something he started doing, and it's the journey continues. So you, the women must also understand, you must marry a man who is a man. How? That man is showing fatherhood. That man is showing that indeed he's an husband. The second element of being a husband is having an understanding that I must, now there's a word, I must love my That's wife. Right. Love becomes a command to him. Love is not a reward. So it's not just when my wife does something good, then I can know. He has this understanding that what qualifies me mm. to marry this woman, to be a husband in her life, is that I must love. So I tell people, you don't just marry a woman you love, but you must love the woman you marry. That's right. Mm. That's deep. Because it's a command. That's deep, yes. it's, a it's a command. The third element of your membership mm. is that you are a priest. Every man must know this. That's why God, in creating the man and the woman, decided to hide the woman in the man. And now, gave this word, everything was given to you, the man. He equipped you with his word. And another person don't know this. Because of the job God was going to assign to you, the man. That office that he knew you were going to occupy, he empowered you with his word. Because he now said, Said the book of Ephesians chapter 5, reading from verse number 25. That look, you must wash and cleanse the woman mm-hmm. by the washing of water, which is the word of God. So, that word that God empowered you with, He knew the woman He was bringing and knew that you needed to sanctify and cleanse her. That's what the anabled man has become so useless because the thing you are supposed to correct is what you are complaining. You see, let me let me put it well. Let, let's read Ephesians chapter. Bible. I, I, I don't know. Can, can, do you have a Bible there? Yes. I want to involve you no, here. So fine. now read Ephesians 5. That's fine. 20. Ephesians yeah. chapter 5. Ephesians? Yeah, verse 25. Ephesians chapter 5. Just no, read the 22. You read the 22 for me first. Where? Read the 22 for me. Okay. Ephesians. Okay, let's do the 25. Okay. I'm touching on the house, so let's do the 25 first. Okay. 25 to 26. Chapter 5. 5. 5. 5. I think uh, somebody has posted it on the um, okay. comment section. He said, Husbands, yeah. love your wives just as Christ. So the question if, if you're not a husband, then this command is not for you. So that's why there are many people in marriages and yet they cannot love their wives. Mm. It's an evidence that they are not husbands. Right. It takes only a husband to love the wife. So don't complain or don't get upset when you see a man who is married and cannot show love to the wife. It's an evidence this man is not a husband. Mm. It takes only a husband to love mm. the wife. 
So there are many men in marriages who are not husbands. Mm. So husbands, love mm. your wives. That's right. Without question. Okay. okay. Um, just as Christ loved the church and gave himself... And he's giving you the matrix to the standard. The, the love you are supposed to show as a husband is not the love your friends are showing to their wife. Okay. So you don't compare mm. your marriage to your wife mm. your friends and say, I'm doing better than my friends or I'm doing better than my dad. You don't compare. Your, the only standard to compare your marriage to is the standard that Jesus That's showed right. to the church. Ah, mm. The Bible speaking said, whilst the church was yet in mm. sin, while the church was still in adultery, mm. while the church was committing all kinds of things, Christ still died mm. for us. Mm. Just the kind of love we are talking about here. At the right time, we will look at the concept of love. But for now, I just want to give you a picture. Let's continue. And gave himself up for her. So a husband who understands this knows that it's my duty to give myself for my wife to protect her, to defend her. So a husband, you see, it's just only a husband to do this. Too. So please, don't start with your counselor. Don't get upset when you meet a man that's not. The fact that somebody is married does not mean he's a husband. Mm -hmm. So there are many, many married today who are not husbands. Mm -hmm. If you are a husband, then you understand it. That I have a, I have a duty to give myself, to protect my wife. We have many men today who have gone around disgracing their wives to their family members, to their friends. It's an evidence you're not a husband. Mm -hmm. They want to prove themselves in the marriage, show that their wife is not better. No, you're not a husband. A husband protects, mm -hmm. a husband provides, mm -hmm. a husband promotes, a husband empowers. So he has said that if, if you are indeed a husband, then you can love mm -hmm. your wife. You can give yourself for mm -hmm. her. And look at the next word. That is more dangerous. Yes. That he might sanctify mm -hmm. and clean yes, her. That's right. That's yes. more okay. dangerous. Which is the woman that God is bringing to you. It is your duty to wash her, clean her. Mm -hmm. So which means many of the things we are complaining about as men in marriages are the same thing God has commanded us to clean. Oh, it's just like a woman who has a three months baby and you go around Telling people, my daughter is smiling. Who is supposed to watch the daughter? <laughs> so that, that's why today we have a lot of irresponsible men. They go around complaining about their wife, and the Bible is telling if you are a husband. So we must learn this. You don't just marry a man because you have a man says, but money. No, mm -hmm. you must check indeed if this man a husband. Mm -hmm. How? The man has equipped himself. That I will protect you, right. I will defend That's you, right. I will give myself, right. I will cleanse and sanctify you. How is he going to do that? That's why you understand why God needed to equip the man at the beginning by giving his word. Because you can only do this when you have the word of God. So he said, cleanse and sanctify my heart. By 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 the washing with water through the word. Through us. the word. So my brothers, that's it right. You don't wash your wife through insults. You don't wash your wife through beatings. As our culture has taught us, about your babuwa, or so bono, please, it's an irresponsible behavior. That's right. For God knew how the whole process of marriage is. So from the, the, from the word, he empowered the man with his word. So when God was giving his command to the man, the woman was in the man. Mm. Why? Because just as an office, he gave to us the man. The office of the husband. So it is your duty to clean, to sanctify the woman. Amen. So today, many men go around complaining about women they are supposed to wash. Mm. Women they are supposed to wash, they go around complaining about them. That's right. So these are three rules. Your, until you define your husband rule and your priesthood, so priest means you, you empower yourself spiritually because there's a spiritual authority God has given to you. So if you meet any man who has lost that, know that his marriage is going to suffer. So that's the first condition. If men can be made in marriages, I tell you, I tell you, our marriages will be so healthy, so powerful. The next element is the women too. If the women can also be females, wow! If yeah. the women can also be females, this is, then this we're is, going to have a healthy relationship. Apostle, this is so deep, um, and it's it's really fulfilling. God bless you for that. But 
So with, with, with what you've taught us, that the men should be a male. So there are a lot of um, comments coming on. I'll read the comments later, but there was a question posing up that what if you realize halfway through the marriage, you realize that you didn't get married to a male? What do you do? Yeah, so that's what I always advise people. You can rectify issues. That's why you need to humble yourself. It is only in marriage that I see people to be so arrogant. Why? Even when you buy your own car and you develop a fault, you humbly take that car to a mechanic shop. Sometimes the mechanic may not even be a graduate, but you respectfully allow him to work on the car. You can build your own house. When there's leakages, you call a, maid, a carpenter or whoever. You come. But when it comes to marriage, we are so arrogant that we think we can manage it until the whole thing gets to that deep stage where you can't do anything. So I thought that most of the time people come for counseling only when the marriage is at the collapse end. There's nothing you can do again. And sometimes they also come not even to seek for I mean, information to build the marriage. They come to look for information to, 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 to empower themselves or to, 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 to let them feel that, yes, they, they are right in deciding to divorce. So the person asking that that's, that, the, that, that that person should lose, everything can be rectified. That's when you meet a good counselor. Every counselor should note that marriage is between a male and a female. And let me tell you this. Bring every report or complaint. Let all the women bring all the issues they have with their husbands. You realize that it is under these three elements I just mentioned. Mm -hmm. My husband is cheating. My husband, is, that man is not, ever, is not never a husband. My husband is so irresponsible. He's not taking care of his children. He's not doing it. It means his role as a father is destroyed. Mm -hmm. My husband it's not spiritually sound. He doesn't go to church. So let any these are the three pillars that defines a man. Mm. So when you meet any woman who have a complaint about a man, analyze it and you find where the problem is coming from. So you can rest for you can do the man through the word of God. You can educate the man. And I'm happy to say many of you here they put they send me message to the master. God bless I just about three days I did my Facebook live. And a gentleman who called me earlier. He was having issues with the wife, and he was rather uh, giving the impression that he has done all he could, he has been a good husband, the wife seems to be difficult, he gave all the pictures, so it was okay, we we'll, we'll be talking. So we started talking. That's when he now followed my life, Facebook life, about three days ago. He started crying, but he called me and was crying. He said, Pastor, what, what, I was explaining the concept of love in marriage. If you love your wife, just as we said, you can't disgrace your wife. And so, you know, you, you, you have love, God, that there are 15 elements that you must bring together to form love. He calls the pastor, I thought I was a good husband. From the, the, today's teaching, I realized that I've not even started loving my wife. So, you can rectify it. The man himself came, he called me, he was crying on the phone. Okay. Okay. So, oh, my yes. sister, she knows it, it, it's not an evidence of. Uh, foundation to divorce. I know sometimes that's what people are heard. Oh, okay, we made a mistake. So I, I think it, it's a, I mean, I can, no, you can't leave. Marriage is a covenant. And let's also tell that person, the fact that you made a mistake doesn't mean God will forgive you. If a marriage is the only institution God designed as an architect and he gave it to us to build, that's why as a woman, it's just like your father having a company and he makes you a, an HR and that tells you to choose a CEO. Somebody you can submit to. So if you don't choose somebody you can submit, that's what about thousand men can propose to you. Yet you will make a choice. Mm. So you don't make a choice and still complain about your choice. <laughs> <laughs> oh God have mercy. <laughs> this <is> well. <laughs> that's what marriage. That's what I said. Lack of knowledge and no he didn't say I'll rescue them because they lack the knowledge. He tell you, he said you are going to end, you are going to perish. Yeah. The only thing that cannot save you is ignorance. Yeah. So you need to empower okay. yourself. Okay, there is another question coming to my my WhatsApp line, and the person is saying, you know, when we compare the male to the female, male originally are egoistic, and so um, if the male is not seeing the headlights, for example, if like you explained what the roles of the male is but if the, the 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 male is missing some of the roles and the lady's hand 
or identify the roles missing, but the male doesn't realize the role missing, how do they move forward? You see, marriage is so complex and complicated, but you need wisdom to unravel the mysteries mm. around marriage. We should not this that marriage is not just about choosing a wife or a husband. Mm. The concept of a wife is an office, mm. and the concept of a husband is an office. And that's another teaching altogether. Why? The day you allow a man to marry you, so just like I said, you are choosing mm. a CEO, yes, the way you choose him, you occupy an office, and you, the HR, you come under him. So you cannot just get up and start mm -hmm. him again. Now, this is what it means. The day you allow a man to marry you, he has occupied mm -hmm. an office. And that office was designed by mm -hmm. God. It wasn't designed by the man. No. It wasn't designed mm -hmm. by the woman. So we don't have authority to change it. So I tell women, anytime you allow a man to marry you, and after perhaps we will read it right now, let's say the same Ephesians chapter 5, verse number 20. Let's say the office. That office is there. Let me read verse 22. Ephesians chapter 20, 5, verse 20, number 22. Ephesians so, 5, 22. Yes. It says, wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as you do to the Lord. Now what you say is a very mm -hmm. dangerous statement. That if the moment you allow a man to marry and become a husband, God is telling you, the authority that I have is the same authority mm -hmm. that a man has. I told you, marriage is the only thing God designed to represent himself. Mm -hmm. So marriage is God himself. And every person that don't understand marriage. So God is telling you, the way you submit to me is exactly the way you submit to your husband. It's a dangerous thing. You know, if women should understand this, they will be careful in choosing a husband. You can marry the most irresponsible, useless man. He has come to occupy an office in your life. Hmm. Now watch it. Continue. Let's see something there. For, sorry. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church. His body of... Did, did you hear that? Did, did you hear that? The husband is your head, and the office is occupied. The position is exactly the same office. Christ. So God did not even compare your husband to the president. The office of the husband is so powerful that even the office of the president. Mm -hmm. The only thing God could co compare to the office of the husband is the office of Jesus Christ. That the office that Jesus occupies in the life of the church is exactly the same office man or husband is occupying the life of the wife. Marriage is so deep. Okay. We think you are just choosing a man who can give, we can have children, hello, marriage, I'm saying it, marriage is God. Mm. Now look at another statement there. So every woman should know that day you marry or you allow a man to marry you, your whole concept of salvation, that keeps your own salvation, you give that key to your husband. So every man, every from your pastor, to, everybody can praise you. Now watch it. If you have worked in a corporate environment, your head writes your appraiser. Mm -hmm. So everybody can like you in the environment. But if your boss says that you are not good, that's the final statement. Marriage is it's dangerous. Yeah. Which means the report about you, the woman, is not about what people are saying out there. Anytime God wants to check you, Christina, God wants to check you, mm -hmm. He checks the heart and the mind of your husband. So what your husband feels about you is a report in the in the in, in front of God. Like, <laughs> read we, 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 we wish we could check mm -hmm. some of these things, but this is what this is what. And this is how God has made it. That's some very passionate about marriage. Because I tell people, marriage will end, end, lead a lot of people to hell no. than we are cooking. Many will end up in hell. Because every person don't understand marriage. And every person don't understand marriage. So you read it. So he tell you, the office of the husband is the same as the office of Jesus Christ. His body of which he is the savior. Now, no, no, that's, 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 come back, come back a little. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the mm -hmm. head of the church. His body, yeah, his body of which he is the savior. He is the savior. He holds the key to your salvation. The same way Jesus holds the key 
to the salvation of the church. Because another key said, no, I cannot be saved without Jesus Christ. Mm. If you're wife, that is nice. Your salvation is in the hands mm. of your husband. Wow. That's amazing. Now watch it. And this is why, this is why I tell you the same position, the lack of men my people perish. Can you imagine you are going to choose a spiritual head and you end up with someone who is spiritually blind? Nipana was spiritually well. Go and choose a PRO, a PRO for a company, then end up going to choose someone who is deaf and dumb, and end up complaining. That's complaining to who? Yeah. No, complaining to who? God gave you the power. I said, no, that's all like I said. Let other men come and propose to you, Christina. You are the one who will choose who to marry. So it means you need to have faith to her. You need to equip yourself to know how to make the right choice. Because you don't choose and cannot complain to anyone. You made the choice. You cannot even complain to God. He has given you the power to choose. Okay. So, now verse 24. Oh wow. Verse 24. Now, Look at his example. He's not from criticism, therefore, and small power. Because, because of this office, he's not commanding you. Therefore, now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. Very dangerous statement. Marriage is not a joke. At all. So when I meet people and I see the way they are handling their marriage, you meet a wife, and so other man and man and say, hey. You can go and stand in church and that's all you can. That man, that stupid man you are married to, that person you call stupid, is the one holding your, the key to salvation. So, when you understand this, then you understand why God will not command you, the woman, to submit. The same way, the same way, that when you're a man and you are getting or you are marrying a woman, you are going to hand over the key to your prayers to that woman. That's the office of the wife. So, an average woman don't know that my wife is the one holding the key to my body. So that one can lock everything on, on my head. And everyone don't know that. It's an office. So you can marry the most irresponsible, useless woman, but she's coming to occupy an office. It's an office. That's right. That's why right. God cannot command you in First Peter chapter 3. Perhaps if you are there, you can read it. Chapter 3, verse 7. The husband, likewise, dwell with them according to knowledge. And another she's according to understanding. How? You need to understand some of these things before you can do it. And he said, then he said, Anna, you must honor the wife. Right. That woman can change everything about you as a man. That's why there are many people, the moment they marry, they think they need to go in a reverse mood. Mm -hmm. And they're like, my wife by a lot woman. The woman I married is no. Mm -hmm. You don't understand. That woman came to occupy an office. Mm -hmm. And if you don't honor her, and like how God will always set the heart and the mind of your wife. Mm -hmm. What your wife feels about you, that's a report card or report she's giving to God. So whenever you ask a man you are praying and your wife is showing support, that prayer will not work. That's why agreement is so key in marriage. That's right. Mm -hmm. And it goes to tell you that your prayers may not be ended. So that woman has the capacity to enter your prayers in the spiritual. So marriage is key. Marriage is key. We are not just marrying man and woman. We are marrying people to offer spiritual positions in our lives. Mm. That's why so you cannot just divorce and say, because um, we didn't know you have to work out rest or you have to pray to work out things. Wow. Is there any other question? If not, then yeah. I'll continue. Yeah. So, so you have to um, start from was, there. Yeah, no, no. There's another question. The time is, is running so quick. Because the question was, um, so what if the woman has realized he's, she's made a mistake or the man that he's married to is not subject to advice or teachings or is not, you know, it's not working out? So they need to now equip them. So they need to seek for mm -hmm. counseling. Get somebody who can help them. That's why I spoke about the you let's humble ourselves and submit ourselves to teachings. Don't think you know anything about marriage. Humble yourself. That's, right. That's why I give an example that you can buy your own car and yet you submit yourself to mechanics. You do it to them when they tell you, you obey. But when you come to marriage, you feel you can do it by yourself. You can't do it by yourself. Mm. You need help. Wow, that's powerful. Yes, you can carry on, sir. <laughs> I don't think there's any. All right, so now. Okay. Yeah. All right, so as a woman, to make your marriage. Rich and enjoyable, mm. and build, and build a healthy relationship. You must be a female yourself. That's right. And the three rules the same way that you must play 
The first one is the role of a mother. You don't give birth to become a mother. It's a, a mother who defines your responsibility towards your home and the society. And those elements are so key. They are, they are topics on its own. Talking about motherhood as a topic is so broad. But I thought when you meet any man or any woman at old age, where they are complaining that they don't have people to take care of them, they, they, I tell you, you are never a mother or you are never a father. Mm. But give us that role to uh, let us understand that it's not about the children you give birth to, yes. but it's about your responsibility to the society. So anyone who comes around you, you have a, a duty to, to, to play a role in their life. It, it's a leadership role. So you, you see people who are saying at all, you say they have a lot of who are coming back to them and say, oh, when I was in school, this one would do so much for me. When I was here, this one would do yes. Whenever you show fatherhood or motherhood, you end up rejoicing at the end of your old or enjoying your old age. So tell me any woman who is struggling, I tell you, you are, you are not a mother. Because you are not a mother, you assume that it's only when you give birth. So it's not about my children. No, you don't give birth to become a mother. So it's an understanding. So when you're a mother, you don't go to work and now you are sabotaging people. No, mothers don't do that. You, you are there to equip and empower people. And mother help people to progress. Like, grab your own children. It's the, it's the aim of every mother to help their children grow to become the best. I mean, yes, the same way. It's an understanding you must have right from infancy if you're a woman. It is an element of your fellowship. So if you have so a child and she's having this understanding, she's so caring, even when she gets, she wants to share with the siblings, yes, it's, an, it's a dimension that God put in us and it defines your leadership your, your role to the society. So, one, a woman who is a male, a female, knows that I'm a mother. So, anyone who comes around her has a testimony. So, when you go to the center, that's where we, that's where we, were, we were looking at the menstrual wife, some of these elements were mentioned that not anybody around her is happy from the maid to, in fact, people even outside the house, when they see her, they are happy. Because she's showing that motherhood. The last element is the element of wife. And let's also say this again. You don't marry to become a wife. Mm. It's an understanding you must have that I have an exclusive duty to only my husband. So just last, we, we, we mentioned 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 4 will tell you, a wife does not have authority over her own body. So regardless of how you love a man, regardless of how you cherish him, as long as he has not taken the, 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 the decision to marry you, he has no right to see your nakedness. Mm. So if you're a woman watching us, share the number of men who have slept with you. It's an evidence you've broken the foundation of your female And that's why you marry and you see cheat when you're married. Don't think marriage will change you. Marriage don't change you. Because marriage goes to say this. Mm. So there's a thing you get to, you will not even want to look at the, your, 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 your husband's face. Yes. And that's where people end up going back to their own problems. You were never a mother and you can't be a mother and a wife even in marriage. So we need to see, this was not what I'm teaching this. I link it to parenting. Parents need to have this understanding. So once you are training your children to have education, build their physical element, you must understand that they have this element that you must work on. Build your male children, uh, your, uh, your, your boys to become males, and build your girls to become more females. Build this understanding in them that they must be mothers, they must be wives. And it's not only a wife to also know that I must submit to my husband. Submission is only in marriage. God never commanded women to submit to men. In fact, God created men and women equally. Just as we read the Genesis chapter 1, the very day he created them, they both had the image and likeness of God. He put them together. That's why he blessed them in the verse 28. So men are not superior to women. Women are not inferior to men. So it is only in marriage because of the offices, because of the leadership. That's why God commanded women to submit and look at the word. Anytime God is speaking about submission, he said, wives, submit your own husband. That's right. So submission is not general. Mm. It's a specific. That's right. You submit to your husband. So it takes only a, a wife to have this understanding That's right. that I must equip myself. That any man that I allow to uh, I marry, it is my duty Amen. to submit to him. Amen. That's what Proverbs 18 will tell you. 
he who finds a wife finds a good thing. So you must be a wife to be found. Mm. You don't marry to become mm -hmm. a wife. And today there are many women out there who are not wives. That's why I can sit at where I am and I can pray this marriage and say, this marriage cannot even go beyond three years. Because Jesus said it. Have you not read that he who made them at the beginning made them male and female? Because the way you think of marriage, you are looking at a met a man, I've met a woman, I love her, she's pretty, she's a but I'm looking at the foundation of marriage. The marriage is not just between a man and a woman. The marriage is between a male and a female. So tell me, any I was say anything that you complain about or that anything that causes a marriage to break was there before the marriage. Mm. Everything. Let any woman who is divorced or any man and I'll tell you, whatever you are complaining about was just from the beginning. Because the man was never a male. The woman was never a female, so you cannot complain. The third element that a woman must exhibit as part of her femaleship is the role of a prophetess. Mm. Every woman is a prophetess. And this is one of the elements that most women don't know. And it's because of that office of the prophetess. That's why at the beginning, when God was placing them, God decided to put the woman inside the man. You see, marriage was never an afterthought. Everything was well thought through. Now watch it. The woman was in the man. Yeah. And now God is bringing the woman out. Mm -hmm. Go back to Genesis chapter 2, verse 19, or from 18 and check. But 18 will tell you. Genesis chapter 2. Genesis. Oh, sorry. Genesis. Verse 18, when God was not thinking of bringing the woman out of the man, okay. he made a profound statement. We just read and see, don't use your English or your literature knowledge to interpret the Bible. Okay. Everything in the Bible has a meaning, even including okay. Roman. And that's why okay. Trump is saying that everything, see, everything that happened and is still happening in the world happened in Genesis chapter 1. Even Jesus Christ died in Genesis chapter 1. The whole book of Genesis is a prologue of the Bible. Mm -hmm. Nothing is an afterthought. So don't assume that God just sat down and he thought, oh, everything is true to us. Sometimes we are, we, are, we, are, we are meant to believe. And God said, it's not true. Read and pay attention to the word. I told you from Romans 1.20 that everything God created, he created to represent something. Women don't know. That's why, that's why a woman, the one you marry her, she holds the key to your prayer. Well, because the office of the wife is the same office the Holy Spirit occupies. Ooh. That's deep. And wow. I'm going to show you from the scriptures. The office of the wife is the same office the Holy Spirit occupies. And that's why the woman needed to be in the man and later come out of the man. That's how the Holy Spirit operates. Oh, wow. Okay. So Genesis chapter 2, Genesis verse 18. 18. 18. The, Lord said, the Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make now, him a helper. Watch it. Let's set our time. The word alone here means all in one, not lonely. Okay. It's not good for the man to be all in one. Mm -hmm. That's why Adam was in the presence of God. Yet when God blessed, God blessed them because they were two in one. So it's not good for the man to be all in one. That's the word alone. Okay, let's continue. I will make him a helper. Suitable. And that's for him. The word, and the line is, mm -hmm. I will make him what? Helper, suitable for him. It's not just an English word, it's an office. Mm -hmm. the, the first time we heard of this statement, that word helper, is in the book of Genesis here, when God was going to bring the woman up. So I'm going to now position her in her office, mm -hmm. and that was the office of the helper. That word helper mm -hmm. is an office. The next time we heard of this name called helper, was when Jesus was talking about the Holy Spirit in John chapter mm. 14. Let's go there. That's right. In Genesis 14. No, John, John chapter 14. 14, sorry. So the first time we heard the word helper was when the woman was coming up. The next time, John chapter 14, verse 16 and 17. John, I want the verse 17, John, but let's start from verse 16. Okay, John 14, verse 16. And I will ask mm -hmm. the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you. Now look at this. Look at the word is another. another. When you read the new thing, just another. You didn't say, uh, uh, like, the, the, here in Genesis, it said okay. a helper. But when he was repeatedly used the word another helper. Another advocate. Here, use the word advocate. Yeah. You know, it's an office. That word advocate, yeah. just like a lawyer. Yeah. 
someone who intercedes on your behalf. That is the office of the wife. It's the same office. Another, which is this, an existing advocate. And who is that person? We are not talking about Jesus here. Another advocate, another helper. So you can only understand this where, now look at it, another advocate. Let's continue. Okay. Not, um, and I will ask of the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help yes. you and be with you forever. Okay. 17, the spirit of truth. The world mm -hmm. cannot accept him because it neither sees okay. him nor knows him. But you know mm -hmm. him, for he lives mm -hmm. with you and will be he, with you. He does what? He lives with, he he what? Lives with you and uh -huh. he lives with you, for he lives with you and two. will be mm -hmm. in you. Two elements, the two dimensions that the Holy Spirit functions. The Holy Spirit needs to be in you and be with you. So the woman needed to be in the man and come and be with the man. Never assume marriage was an afterthought. Because of the office. You cannot operate in that office until you are in the person and you are with the person. That's what Paul would now say that. If we live in the spirit, we must also walk in the spirit. That's right. These are the two dimensions. The woman needed to be in the man and later come and be with the man because of that office. Another Christian don't know this, including most men don't know this. That's why many women have been a, 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 a bad woman in the life of their husband. Because when purpose is not known, abuse is inevitable. Right. When you don't know your relevance, you become a problem. Well, if you don't who you are, you become a, a problem. Marriage was designed to be a blessing. So how do you maintain a healthy relationship, a good relationship? First and foremost, note that marriage is God. Two, and, and that statement, if I want to tackle it, it's a whole teaching on this one. But if you understand marriage is God, that's what you understand. That's not why God built all the commandments mm -hmm. on his word, not on the word of you. So when God is not telling you do this, do that, he never said, husband, love your wife because your wives are good or better. No. So love your wife just as Christ does. So the one you are focusing on is not your wife, but God himself. God is part of the marriage. Marriage is God. Possibly. Now he commanded the woman, submit your husband as to the Lord. Possibly. So you have no excuse of complaining because my husband cannot do this. No. Marriage is God. And every command about marriage is God himself. So I think we have to do a part two because our time is up. This is amazing. I'm so perplexed. It's it's filling. It's it's knowledge. It's it's so good. I don't know, but I know that my viewers are enjoying because the questions have, have really stopped. They are just I, I believe you're absorbing and it's so um, I'd say fortunate and unfortunate at the same time because our time is up and we'd love to keep to time. Um, viewers, this is amazing. Keep sharing. Come back to it. Make notes. Play back. Share. Don't be greedy. Share. I think Apostle is going to come back to, with us and, and finish this off because this is really, really good. I need to go back and, and re-listen to the whole thing because it's been a blessing to me. Apostle, God bless you so much for your time. God bless you. Thank you for, for sharing and making time. I'm sorry to cut you off because our time is up and we, we have to go. So um, I'll, I'll keep in touch and then we'll come back for the part two. So viewers, this is the end. Please send some love to Apostle. Keep sharing and watch out for the part two soon. I won't wait for a month. We'll come back soon. Stay blessed. Apostle, before you go, please pray for us. Maybe there is somebody online struggling in the marriage, realized with these teachings that they've made a mistake. They've not married a male figure or this male figure in making or lacking something. And as he said, all hope is not lost. God is still in the miracle business. There are some men that are so full of ego that they don't even want help or will not even listen to advice. There are some women that with everything you do, change doesn't happen. So there are different stages of challenges that everyone faces. So before you leave, please pray for us. Pray for viewers. Those, some are at work. Some would watch the video later. Let's pray and, and, and speak something over their lives. Could you please pray for us, Apostle, before you go? 
Father, we thank you for such a wonderful day you have given to us and your blessing, your word. We are so grateful to you. I thank you, Lord. I thank you for the life of everyone who watched this video. And I pray, O oh Lord, that may you touch them, O oh Lord. May you protect them. May you guide them. I pray that God, may you satisfy their spirits, their soul, and their body. May you release them from only anyone whose marriage is under attack by the blood of Jesus Christ. Let them be released and let them be empowered. I pray, O oh Lord, that let your word be established in the life of our viewers. Father, Lord, every marriage is our prayer that you will bring every marriage to the level where it will have the image and likeness of you. Lord, bless my marriages and any marriage that needs the fruit of the world. I pray, may you guide and grant them children. Lord, anyone who is struggling financially, help them bless them with money. As we are ending this year, I pray that let us end where in our marriage. Let our marriage be joyful. Let our marriage, I mean, have the capacity to, 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 to be happy, happy and, and, and endure every temptation that comes our way. I pray that, oh Lord, may you empower us and may you help us. Help us to be the change that we are seeking, oh Lord. Help us that our marriages will stand the test of time and our marriages will be a sign unto others. Let our marriages encourage others to also, Lord, come into our prayer, oh Lord, that help our rulers and bless. Let people have testimonies. In Jesus Christ, name. Amen. amen amen god bless you apostle my viewers love you god bless you god viewers bless you. keep sharing some said we love you we want you to come back we need a part two um i'm so sorry i couldn't read more god bless you apostle some are saying i'm still here some of your viewers that know you from Burma camp they are all giving you shout outs god bless you all for coming Stay tuned, keep watching. We'll come back. Apostle, God richly bless you. We are so honored and so blessed. God and bless definitely, you. there will not be only part God two, bless. but there might be part two, three, four, five, six. Because if we start with the marriage, I've heard some teachings from the beginning. We are not going to stop. God richly bless you. May He increase you, give you more wisdom, more insight into His word, that we will continue to eat what He gives unto you. God bless you. Viewers, have a lovely, lovely God day. Bless. We'll catch up. This is Counselor's Corner. You know how we do it. Keep your questions coming. I'll send it over and we will meet again. Stay blessed. Bye for now. Bye. Yeah.